Let's talk now with U.S. Senator John McCain. Senator, welcome to the show. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me back on, and congratulations on all your good works and uh, interesting times, my friend. Thank you. By the way, you'll be here on Friday with Sarah Palin, and a lot of people are very excited about this event out at the fairgrounds. It's going to be quite a turnout. Thank you. We're expecting a big turnout and uh, looking forward to it. And uh, uh, Sarah, I'm very proud of all the great work she's been doing. She had a very good piece out today, as a matter of fact, on the, on this whole health care reform debacle. By the way, you were asked uh, what you thought uh, your old friend Ted Kennedy would have said, and you smiled and said uh, uh, what you would say to Ted Kennedy. You said congratulations, but you said uh, this is a massive government takeover of health care, and you promised the GOP would fight it on all fronts, uh, challenging reconciliation and the fixed bill in the Senate and moving Broadway to repeal the bill later this year. Well, let's talk about that vote yesterday and uh, what now happens to health care. The president will sign the Senate bill, but then uh, there's a long way to go here, isn't there? Well, I think so, John, especially since this reconciliation is a sham. Uh, as you know, it's a way to avoid the uh, the fact that you can't bring the bill back to the Senate with Scott Brown here. And so, I mean, that's just a fact. And so they're doing this reconciliation, uh, which is uh, never intended for anything of this magnitude, one-sixth of the gross national product. And uh, so we'll be fighting it on the floor of the Senate, and then we'll be fighting it in Tucson, and we'll be fighting it on in Phoenix and in Flagstaff and in Sholo and in Page and in Yuma. And across uh, the state of Arizona, the people of Arizona do not want this legislation. And so we're not going to give up the fight. And uh, uh, I was very disappointed in our Democrat members of the delegation who all voted in favor of this, despite overwhelming majorities of people in Arizona don't want it. And the governor of the state of Arizona said that we simply could not afford it. It's going to bankrupt the country could I just mention one thing to you very sure. quick, quickly, John, uh, in case you missed it, uh, and I'm sure you probably didn't. Um, the Wall Street Journal this morning, there's an article t- entitled Inside the Pelosi Sausage Factory. Everybody should read that if they get a chance. It's, the, it's really how the unsavory sausage, Chicago-style sh- sausage making uh, went on to get those last uh, votes to get it through the House of Representatives. It's out outrageous it's outrageous and by the way beneath it is my piece called iraq's democracy take shape but that that's not the subject of our our, our conversation now i mean it is uh, could i make one small example and there are many many uh you know according to this um, cbo estimate remember that the congressional budget office it's garbage in garbage out they can only pr- uh, cost the parameters uh, uh, and the policy that they're given, okay? So um, they were given an assumption that we would cut uh, doctors' uh, reimbursement for treatment of Medicare patients by 21% sometime this fall. That it was in their assumptions they were given. You and I know there is never going to be a cut of 21% of physicians' reimbursement for treatment of Medicare patients. Otherwise, they'd stop treating Medicare patients, right? And so they assumed that we're going to cut, um, which is some $280 billion, cut uh, that amount of money out of physician reimbursement. If that had not been counted in there, and obviously those numbers would have been a that we would have be running uh, a serious cost problem, um, along with many other assumptions they made that were just totally bogus. Some of these changes are gradual, as you know, Senator, with uh, some not fully phased in for almost a decade. Uh, some of the biggest shifts, for instance, uh, such as mandates for most Americans to carry insurance, uh, new places to buy it, and new employer obligations, and a ban on denying coverage to the sick are almost four years off. It's a lot of time. Uh, Many Republicans pledging to uh, change this, defeat it, uh, strike it uh, within that period of time. Uh, Well, it's Bernie Madoff accounting is what it is. That's all it is. You're you're, uh, cutting benefits and raising taxes for four years before any of the real uh, uh, subsidies and assistance uh, kicks in. I mean, it's just that the end the reason why they did it, again, was so that the Congressional Budget Office would score it 
as costing less to the taxpayers. The next, as uh, Congressman Paul Ryan pointed out, the next 10 years, which do not, which everything is takes place at the same time, obviously, then you have a $1.5 trillion debt. By the way, you're quoted on the Hill uh, blog uh, today as saying Democrats should not expect much cooperation from Republicans the rest of the year. In fact, uh, you've said uh, and there won't be any cooperation whatsoever, no cooperation for at least the, uh, the rest of the year. They've poisoned the well and what they've done and how they've done it with health care. Well, that's exactly right, and uh, by the way, uh, that shouldn't be too earth-shaking because they have not uh, reached out to us in any way on any issue. They've jammed through their stimulus package. They jammed through their budget. They jammed through their omnibus spending bill with 9,000 earmarks on it. They've jammed through uh, this. Their strategy has been jam it through, try to pick up one or two Republicans if you can. If not, just jam it. By the way, as uh, this, uh, I guess, uh, Senate moves uh, from health care, uh, certainly a ways uh, from now, but uh, they are going to move to immigration uh, with, with no cooperation with Republicans. How would you expect that to turn out? That's, uh, that's going to be another war down the down Well, the uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, who had been uh, talking with um, Senator Schumer and the president about it, said because of reconciliation, he's not interested in anything to do with immigration reform. I, I had two problems with, with the outlines of their proposal. One, we've got to secure the border first. You know that three Americans were just killed in Juarez, Mexico, just on the other side of the border. The violence is incredible. And the other is I want to see a, a legal temporary worker program that's not run by a commission, that's not run by the unions or the enemies of it, but a true legal temporary worker programs that someone can come and work and then has to go back to the country they came from. By the way, your comments in the Wall Street Journal uh, concerning uh, the uh, the Middle East. Uh, uh, comment, if you will, Henry, Hillary Clinton, of course, urging Israel to make concessions for peace. What's your take on the administration's approach to this? And, uh, of course, Netanyahu being here and uh, the whole idea of AIPAC, uh, the meeting and uh, the Secretary of State speaking to AIPAC. What would you tell AIPAC? I would tell them that um, all you need to do is demand... Um that the United States' priority be the existence of the state of Israel. Settlements are not the important issue here. The neighbors of Israel who are, say that they're bent on Israel's extinction have to recognize the existence of the state of Israel. That's the way that negotiations can continue and settlements can be part of those negotiations. The administration has got it wrong. They put the settlements before the issue of the recognition of Israel's right to exist. Russian uh, Prime Minister uh, Putin has told uh, Clinton that uh, Russia may accede to the uh, sanction resolutions on Iran. Uh, Putin went on apparently to caution Clinton that sanctions do not always help to resolve such an issue, and sometimes they can have a counterproductive impact. How do you read the Putin statement? (laughs) I view Putin as a real power. In Russia, I think he keeps insisting that we have missile defense as part of any strategic arms reduction treaty, which is the height of insanity. And uh, I, I'm very, very, very skeptical that they will join in any significant sanctions against either Iran or North Korea. And we need to act with our European allies and impose sanctions right away, included amongst those is showing the pictures of these people who are committing these heinous crimes, killing these young people, brutalizing them in prison, and so that everybody will know them. They will know their names, plus helping with the Internet, plus a ban on refined petroleum products going into Iran. Forgive me for jumping all over here, but sure, I no problem. A, a broad perspective on some of your uh, observations of what has happened in a very dramatic almost uh, 48 hours here. And today, the Senate Banking Committee... Uh, passed out uh, financial reforms without one Republican vote. Uh, you've looked this over. What is your take on uh, what uh, Dodd did and others on that Senate Banking Committee? Well, I think it's kind of the classic liberal Democrat uh, proposal. Uh, they have lost sight of what we, the only object of this legislation should be, and that is that no institution should ever again be too big to fail. And uh, they're giving more powers to the Uh, Federal Reserve, which I think is very dangerous. And so, again, um, they will ram uh, uh, this legislation through. 
on a partisan basis until the elections in November. And, John, I predict to you a seismic event in these elections this November. This president is governing from the far left, and we are a right of center nation, and we don't like it. Let's talk a bit about Iraq and the, uh, the somewhat of a doubt in the outcome of the elections. Um, what was your observation on these elections, and, and what about a, a forthcoming outcome uh, and how it might affect our policy in Iraq? Well, uh, it's the only contested election outside of Israel in all of the Middle East, so it's good to see it contested. It's good to see heated rhetoric, and uh, there's going to be some some negotiations between the two leading contenders. Um, I think it's going to be two steps forward and one step back, and they'll be fighting and arguing with each other. That's not totally an unhealthy thing when you have a contested election. Um, no American service member has been killed in the last two months, which is a, in, in Iraq, which is an incredible statement about the success. And I wish the president would use the word victory at least one, just once. And uh, so I think you're going to see an Iraq that goes two steps forward and one step back. It'll be very messy. Democracy is a very messy thing. But look, it's incredible what we've achieved there. And they will be a friend and an ally in the Middle East. And they'll be an example to the rest of the Middle East and something we can use to try to convince our other friends in the Middle East to try the same thing. That's a free and fair election. Obviously, these elections of 2010 are going to be hotly contested, as you say. You, you believe there'll be a tidal wave of uh, response against this Congress. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, uh, feeling out there that incumbents are in trouble. You're an incumbent. Uh, J.D. Mm -hmm. Hayworth is playing on that. Uh, I mm -hmm. see polls uh, with you up 20 or up 10 or whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Still a race out there because of this uh, anti-incumbent feeling. What do you say to people when they say, throw them all out, uh, throw the, all the bums <laughs> say I have great sympathy with their sentiment. Last poll I saw that uh, the approval rating of Congress was 17 percent, and I don't think you or and I have met any of that in the 17 percent uh, recently. Uh, look, I, I've got to earn every vote. I've got to fight for jobs for Arizona. I've got to prove that I am effective for the state of Arizona in getting jobs and getting our economy back on track to help protecting our military bases and helping the men and women who are serving in the military. But most of all, it's jobs and jobs and jobs. And I'm fighting for a copper mine in Superior, Arizona, and a, and a ski resort in Flagstaff, and a, a expansion of some of our defense industries, which are so important, as well as Intel and others, and small businesses, which are the generators of jobs. I know I've got to earn every vote. I'm working very hard to get it, and I'm, I'd be honored to have the opportunity of continuing to serve. You know, I don't think there's a Tucsonan that did not feel more patriotic after this air show this weekend. It had been uh, gone for a few years from here, and it came back. Uh, thousands, tens of thousands uh, went to Davis Mountain Air Force Base. Each one of them came away with a sense of incredible pride in the great power of the United States and, uh, and its incredible military and its Air Force. But it was just an amazing event. Uh, well, obviously, as a fighter pilot, you understand a little bit about that. But it was just something else, Senator. I can't tell you how many people were just so thrilled to see not only the skill of these pilots, uh, but the power of, uh, of America all on display in a couple of days here at Davis Mouth. And, it was, uh, and because it had been gone, I think, there, a great many people were then again, and rightly so, uh, reminded again of how important that military base is to us and how important our military strength is. And I appreciate very much the DM-50, the support group for Davis Monthan. Uh, they do a magnificent job. I'm proud to have worked to make sure that uh, Davis Monthan Air Force Base has whatever it needs to, to continue the vital mission that is performed there. I also would like to point out to Tucson International Airport. Uh, we're going to try to get an expansion of it. There is uh, going not only F-16 training of foreign nationals pilots there, but we're also going to get F-35 training there. So we're going to have the F-35 at Luke, at Yuma, and at Tucson International, and, of course, the reliable, incredibly effective still A-10 and other uh, aircraft are out at DM, which is a magnificent base. But I finally... People love to be stationed in DM and in Yuma and at the Yuma Proving Ground and, and at Fort Huachuca, 
and in at Luke, and they love it because the people of Arizona treat them so well and welcome them so warmly. And then we're an all-volunteer force, and I'm so proud that they choose to serve in the great state of Arizona. Well, very quickly, uh, I want you to have the opportunity to invite people to come out with you uh, and, and the former Alaska governor. Uh, 12 noon, I believe it is, at uh, the fairgrounds, Pima County Fairgrounds. Uh, 12 noon at the fairgrounds. Uh, Sarah will be there. Cindy will be there. A lot of good folks will be there. We're going to have a great rally. And, uh, you know, she's a wonderful, unique person, and I'm so proud to know her, and I'm glad she's coming back to, to the great state of Arizona. Senator, thanks. See you on Friday. I appreciate you being on the show today. Appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye.